Welcome to the Masonic Temple in downtown St. John's, once home of the Masons, now home to Spirit of Newfoundland Dinner Theater. Hello, I'm Carl Wells, food critic and food journalist. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, here we are in this beautiful room, newly renovated, where they perform all of their shows at Spirit of Newfoundland, and they're doing three shows. Three this Christmas. Yes, so we have to decide which of the shows we want to go to, because we can't go to all of them. They've got three different menus as well. Lots of food. Lots of food. Now, uh, the shows are Grinch Dressing and Gravy. How's that for a name? Hence the green shirt. That's right. You look very Grinch-like. I do. It's even more Keep so it up. today. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Oh Holy Night, which is a special operatic show, which features Shelley Neville, Calvin Powell, and Peter Halley. And Sunday Sunday, which is a brunch. It's a gospel brunch, and they do it here every Sunday. And that has uh, a lot of nice things, all kinds of different sandwiches, as well as... Just like a British high tea. Exactly, and they have scones mm -hmm. and cream and jam, that sort of thing. And you'd be familiar with that. <laughs> now, uh, on the table, we've got some of the appetizers from the shows. And tell us about the soup. Well, what is this? this is from Grinch Dressing and Gravy. We've got a beautiful cream of broccoli soup with some sharp cheddar cheese on the top. Green soup. Green, soup. Green soup. And we have the salad, which is the appetizer from Oh Holy Night. They have three different styles of cuisine on that particular menu. They have Italian, French, and German. And this is the Italian salad, which has an unbelievably aromatic dressing. On the program today, coincidentally, Diddly, yes. we have the Chief Operating Officer of Spirit of Newfoundland. Kathy Hicks. And you're going to be cooking for her because she really, she, does, she doesn't even have a stove in her house. So it's quite the challenge, quite she, the challenge. She has a microwave. I met the challenge. You met the challenge. You're going to perform a microwave dish for her. A very good one, uh, by the way. And Toby Jean's a young professional, wants to have her kitchen organized for her. And Chef Bob Arneal is going to take care of that for us on One Chef, One Critic today. So let's get started. We'll taste Beautiful. Kathy Hicks's food at the theater and uh, we'll see what she thinks of your recipe. Excellent. If you're going out for dinner and you plan to have more than one glass of wine, take a cab. And here we are in the One Chef, One Critic kitchen, and Steve and I are very happy to welcome today a good friend of ours, Kathy Hicks, the Chief Operating Officer of Spirit of Newfoundland Productions, and uh, we've got a confession to make. We were in your apartment, and uh, we noticed something, didn't we, Steve? Absolutely. The, the gal with no stove in the kitchen. What is this, you know? Fantastic. I know. No stove. You wonder why I got such big hips. Yeah. <laughs> how does she do? I know. It's amazing. It's a, it's a unique feature. Yeah. Uh, uh, how come? How, how come you don't have the stove? You know what? I never really planned it, but now I kind of like it because, you know, it makes me kind of eat fresh food. But I didn't plan it. But what happened was it was, um, I'm in an apartment building, and uh, and I bought a new stove. And Sears would keep calling, you know, Sears to call, see, Miss Hicks, how is your new stove working? <laughs> And I said, well, I don't have the plastic off yet, but phone me back in a few months. And they did this for two years, kept phoning me. And I said, I don't have the plastic off. Then one of the tenants, their stove broke. And I said, well, clearly I'm not using mine, so you can have that <laughs> one. So we took it, and then I liked the spot where it was gone. I said, well, I'm not putting one back. And I didn't, and it's grand. Well, everybody who appears on One Chef, One Critic either uh, has to cook or they've got to learn how to cook. Fantastic. I'm food, all up for that. Food is so important to our lives. And Steve just for you, is going to do a special recipe, right, Steve? What I've got here, Kathy, I've got a beautiful fresh Atlantic salmon, and what I'm going to do underneath it, I'm going to have some beautiful yellow, red, and green, and orange peppers, and we're going to drizzle that with some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, and some red wine vinegar. So uh, let's get cracking, shall we? Uh, yeah, I can already smell the uh, spices. It's beautiful. Perfect, yeah. perfect. So we've just got some yellow peppers, if you want to put half of those in there. Okay, and I do have clean hands. Oh, so I know, I know. Throw That's it, perfect. There. That's spread great. Spread them? Absolutely, some red. Do they need to be spread in a certain way? Absolutely. Okay. Well, in a mix moment, them. we'll mix them all up. That's okay. fine. And then some green. Green, gorgeous. Okay. Lovely. Uh, last minute, some orange as well. So. All right, nice uh, colors. Steve, I notice you're using uh, balsamic vinegar and red wine vinegar. Why, why are you using two different types? Um, 
really because the, the balsamic vinegar is dark and I don't want to discolour the, the dish itself, but it's got some beautiful pungent flavours to go through with the red wine vinegar as well. So mm. if I can just bring this over here, Cathy, I'll use my hands on the fish. As I say, okay. I've got these beautiful fillets, some nice five ounce fillets there, and there's three of us for dinner tonight. Yeah. And it's oh, gone. Good. But what we did notice in your apartment, you had a microwave. So this is hence why we're going to do that, you see. So that's beautifully laid on there, like and so. I, and I bet you only use your microwave for <laughs> heating things up, like most people, right? Uh, well, I tell you what, you know, it was a funny, really uh, quick, funny story. Uh, somebody wanted to use my apartment to do a film shoot like you guys are doing right now. A drizzle and, of olive uh, oil, extra virgin drizzle olive oil. Drizzle of olive oil, oh, good. Yeah, sorry, okay. carry on. And uh, anyway, so they brought the actors and the cameras and the gear and the equipment all set up, and then I left the apartment so that they could just do the shoot. And they phoned me to say, what is this? Are you the only person in all of St. John's doesn't have a stove? <laughs> so they used the, uh, ended up using the dishwasher to pretend it was a stove. And they took a cake out of the dishwasher. And, uh, but they did have to use the microwave that day as well. A little seasoning there. That was uh, just ground pepper. Ground, ground black pepper and a little bit of salt. And the aromas are now coming through mm. and the vinegars really, there. Yeah, you can. Beautiful. Vinegars. Amazing, isn't it? Is and this now, a one-minute chef? This is a one-minute <laughs> chef, absolutely. <laughs> Holy jumpins. Thanks a lot, Carl. And then we're just going to put some saran wrap over there. Why? To, just so it steams. Keeps it. the heat in. Keeps the heat in. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. Nice and tight, like so. And what we're going to do now, Kathy, if you can just stand to one side, I'm just going to okay. pop this in the microwave. There we go. What happens if you don't put on the plastic? It will dry out, but here we, we want to longer, steam it, it and take longer. It longer for it to cook as well, I think. Correct. So okay. what we're going to do, then pop it in the microwave. I'm going to put it on for five minutes. Wow, five. And okay. this is going to be on a medium heat. And away we, we go. go. Now, uh, while that's cooking, uh, I want to ask you something about Spirit of Newfoundland. Yes. Uh, this year, you moved into a new building. Ah, uh, the Masonic Temple. Yes. How exciting is that? I bet, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah when you go to drive down the street, I still drive down, I look up and I go, I cannot believe this building now belongs to the community. Yeah. You yeah. know, it just belongs to Spirit of Newfoundland, but it's yeah. open to the community for the first time because it's only ever been used by the Masons, really, in the upstairs rooms in particular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, we gorgeous. don't know what they were doing up in those. <laughs> no, 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 we don't. Do we? <laughs> you know, they These were secret societies, and it oh. remains secret. But it's uh, we're now, you know, we're getting in there and we're taking out all the walls to expose the windows and such. Because even the yeah. windows were were blocked up. Yes, and they're yeah. beautiful windows, so to get lots of light in there. And I know everyone's going to be really pleased when it's finally done. You know, I bet to yeah. see it. It's beautiful, yeah. elegant, and grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Mm. Um, what are you actually, what have you been doing in the building lately? Um, well, you know, I think the main thing is dinner theater. We still do that dinner and show, mm -hmm. various types of shows coupled with food. And um, anyway, so Steve will have you down cooking. Absolutely. They don't want me cooking, but. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we do that. But um, we'll be doing all kinds of performance, uh, whether it's just one person playing the guitar to a storyteller, uh, as long as there's an audience looking for, yes. you know, m generally music, because that's what we do most. But we're also, you know what, using that and building and growing uh, boron lessons, musical theater master classes, opera classes. Uh, you know, there's three beautiful big rooms in there, or four really, plus a bar. So it's the bar becomes like a common area, so you could have all kinds of classes going on. Yeah, yeah. And then people mingling downstairs and having um, a drink and something good to eat from the microwave. <laughs> So essentially you've turned the building or you're turning the building into a kind of an art center. Yeah, like a performing arts center yeah. we want it to be and uh, which is, uh, it's, it's not that it's, uh, yeah, it's needed in the city and uh, you know because it is so artistic. Now you know that it's right in the postal code A1C and the A1C postal code actually Stats Canada shows that it is the most artistic postal code yes. in the whole country. Yes, I heard so that. So it's yeah. smack yeah. dab in there. So every day, I mean, there's somebody coming by and they want to, you know, they, they want to bring their art and show art. Mm -hmm. So it's not just performance, it's visual art. And um, yeah, so we want to make it a really active, vibrant, dynamic place. And praise heaven, now to be a stage for me somewhere in there. <laughs> But yourself included, and uh, yeah, so lots of great performances and lessons. Now, Steve, uh, let's talk about your rice. You've got some rice you just pulled out of the uh, microwave. Absolutely. Well, microwave, I'm surprised. Absolutely. Well, actually, you can buy it. It's already made in the marketplace now. This is a, a long grain rice, already pre-cooked. You pop it into the microwave for two minutes, but it, this is just a plain rice. So what I'm going to add to that, I've got some beautiful pesto, which is basil and pine nuts and olive oil. Again, you can buy this in the stores, and it's a fresh product. 
and the smell, just smell that. I oh my, the aroma. Mm, that is beautiful, oh. beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, is this local basil, can you get no, it? No, as I yeah. say, this, is, this was already pre-made, this one. Oh, so. Okay. So we're gonna put one, two, and three, three, scoops. three scoops in there, because there's three of us, so to speak. You can and make it, but that, that may be a little <laughs> too <laughs> advanced for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this if any of, you know what? Well, that's another class altogether. <laughs> if any of my friends are watching, don't expect me to cook. <laughs> and as you can see, we'll just casually put that through the, through the rice itself. Okay. And when the salmon is ready, we're going to bring it out. And then we'll pop this back in there for another couple of minutes as well. But uh, as that you looks, can see, the colors, the colors yeah. and the smells and the oils there. It's, uh, yeah. I so think we'll have a beautiful the, dinner there. The rice is already wet. It's already wet. It was already cooked. It was already cooked, cooked and, and microwavable. And yeah. is in the freezer section of a store. No, it's, it's in the it's in the rice section. It's in the uh, it's in the general in the grocery yep. side of the uh, of the uh, okay. grocery stores themselves. So uh, I guess it would be vacuum packed. It is vacuum yeah. sealed. Yeah. yeah, and you just have to pop, yeah. pop a little hole in yeah. it, and away we go. So it's getting easier to eat well. It's getting easier to Thank eat well. Thank heavens. Yeah. <laughs> especially with the variety of products that are out there, and and for the for the gal like you are with no stove, it's. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, a friend of mine. We once had a. Uh, we once made a bet that for a whole year we would go to a restaurant every single day. Anyway, so oh he well. <laughs> <laughs> I still won. Doing it. But that's okay. No, I think this is really important. It's great because I have lots of vegetables in my freezer. I want to know how to use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, get those done. Yeah, good. Absolutely. Good. Good to know. Yeah. Now, uh, Chief Operating Officer yes. of Spirit of Newfoundland, it sounds uh, really, really important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I know you don't sing, so what? <laughs> <laughs> What exactly do you do? <laughs> I don't think and I don't cook. Uh, but, you know, funny enough, uh, I w you could be chief executive officer. I mean, it seems like a silly thing. The, th that's done already. I already? can't believe oh, it. Wow, that fast. That was five minutes. That was five minutes, correct. Sure, that wouldn't give you a time to go and brush your teeth or do anything else, no. would it? Yes. Oh, my. Well, now, Steve, Steve's too polite to mention this, but we <laughs> forgot something. We forgot to have some oven mitts standing by, so... He's probably taken a, a layer of uh, skin off skin me now. Off, but anyway, but that, <laughs> that looks that. absolutely fabulous. The, mm. It looks and it smells, but it's like, look, how come it's, oh, the balsamic vinegar has made it brown. brown. Oh yeah. my goodness yeah. gracious. And so, the the so then we'll pop the rice back into the oven then, and uh, it looks like it's perfectly cooked. Cooked, absolutely. And just yeah. touch that there now. Yeah. Five minutes. And so, what's all the fuss about? Is there a fuss about not using microwaves? I mean, microwaves are fabulous for cooking, no, aren't they? Absolutely. I think people yeah. are just intimidated. They did. Oh, is yeah. that okay? Yeah. yeah they, if I can do it, you anybody know, can do it. It's a piece of electronic gear, and you know, people don't understand microwaves. They've only been around for about thirty years or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> now your microwave well, doesn't have any dust on it or anything yeah, like that, does it? No. Well, well, I, dust on the well, top. well, I always tell people, you know, when you buy a microwave, they do come with. Uh, usually they come with a fabulous uh, instruction booklet that has a lot of recipes in it. And basically all you have to do is follow the recipes. And don't and, be afraid to. And many of these recipes are actually quite good. But microwave cookery is a fabulous way to cook. Because mm -hmm. it, it keeps a lot of the nutrients in and you don't have to use a lot of, uh, you don't have to use a lot of uh, oil or, or anything like that. Absolutely. Now, uh, Kathy, uh, would you like to have wine with your meals? I certainly sure you would. Do. Every, That's everybody likes so to have great. wine with their meals. So I tell you what I'm going to do. We have a wine cellar downstairs. Okay. I'm going to head down to the wine cellar to pick out some wine or have somebody help me pick out some wine. And then we're going to, you guys are going to plate this up and I'll be back. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Carl is very good with wine too, isn't he? He is. So good. Jeremy, I've just been upstairs with Kathy Hicks, Chef Steve Watson. Oh, made this beautiful dish. Salmon, a little balsamic vinegar, some red wine vinegar, sweet peppers. Did it in the microwave. So, what would be a good choice of wine to go with that? Peppers, salmon, balsamic. You know what? I think Sauvignon Blanc is the best way Sounds to go. Sounds good to me. I have some here actually. Oh, let's see. We'll start off. Probably the uh, best value there mm. for money. We That's uh, Philippe de Rothschild. It's French from Bordeaux. 100% Sauvignon Blanc, crisp minerality. Mm. Great uh, citrus to it as well. Should be great with the salmon. Nice acidity. You want something with a lot of acidity to go with the vinaigrette because it's so tough. So, how much uh, would about like that cost? Uh, around thirteen dollars, right okay. there. So now, if we wanted to go a little higher, a little, probably a little more of a premium wine. Well, sure, we, could... we can go into uh, Sancerre, a little further south. This is in Loire Valley, okay. still French again, uh, from Moreau. 
Uh, a little different in flavor, just that it'll get a little bit more grassiness to it, a little mm -hmm. stony. Sometimes you can get a little bit of floral aromas as well, which is great. So Sancerre would be the grape? No, Sancerre is the village it's from. Okay. It's still Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. So if we really wanted to kind of push the boat out, what would we, uh, what would, would we well, go for? Well, if you really want that uh, once a year bottle, maybe the... Uh, Chateau Le Rivet au Prion. Is, oh, uh, no, you know, you know like that sounds more expensive. <laughs> well, it, so it sounds like it, and it, you know what, it is Chateau. more expensive. You're looking around yeah. $50 for this one. Okay, so what uh, grape would we be talking about here? Now, this one's a little different because it's Sauvignon Blanc mostly, but there mm -hmm. is a little bit of Sémillon as well, which is uh -huh. another varietal that they blend it just in Bordeaux like that. Okay. So, I mean, it's still fantastic. That real Sauvignon Blanc acidity is what you mm -hmm. want. You really want an acidic wine with right. salmon and with those vinaigrettes. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I don't. I mean, Kathy's a single gal on her own and everything. I don't think she could. She'd want to go for one of these higher price point wines. So, I'm going to take the uh, Baron Philippe de Rothschild. That's a great pick. Thanks, Jeremy. No and, problem. Uh, oh, by the way, this time close the door on your way up. Sorry about that. I'll get oh, it this time. Okay, I'm going to decant this now and bring it upstairs. Enjoy. Well, the food is ready, but where's Carl with the wine? Oh, hold on, hold on. Here. I'm here. And I uh, have selected, well, actually, Jeremy helped me. Select. Jeremy. <laughs> We've been hearing about Jeremy. Who's Jeremy, the phantom Jeremy. Jeremy's not a phantom. <laughs> Jeremy is somebody who spends time in my wine cellar, and uh, along with Andrew every now and then. But anyway, Jeremy uh, selected this Baron, de, uh, Baron Philippe de Rothschild Sauvignon Blanc to go with uh, the meal today. And uh, I think you're going to like it. You can uh, Baron Philippe de Rothschild. Just, okay. just smell that. Mm. You're gonna mm. you're gonna love it. It's beautiful mm. Sauvignon Blanc. We'll make a sommelier out of you yet. Well, yeah, I have decided. Go, I definitely Thank want you. to be a sommelier when I grow up. Now, shall we try? Oh, beautiful. Stephen's salmon. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Just look at the uh, beautiful way Steve has presented this dish. Mm. Boy. Now, it's amazing that you can you can cook this type of meal using a microwave. It's absolutely in delicious. In five minutes. In five minutes. minutes. Absolutely. The um, the balsamic vinegar on here. Wow, does that ever mm. give it a great taste? Five minutes in the microwave. Well, you know what? Um, thank you for that because I need really short recipes, and uh, I know there's one that I do every day, just well every every week. Mm -hmm. um, it's a shrimp chicken uh, curry soup, not nearly as good as this, but I'll leave the recipe with you anyway, <laughs> if you want. Right, that is great. And folks, uh, <clears throat> you can go to the Central Dairies website, centraldairies.com, uh, to get the one chef, one critic recipe that Kathy's going to uh, give us, and get this one as well. And now. Here's how you can get in touch with us on One Chef, One Critic, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get your recipes, so send them on in. For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you win a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. A roast with the bone in will cook faster than a boneless roast because the bone transfers the heat quicker to the center. Steve, that salmon that you did for Kathy Hicks was amazing. It was really, really good. But look what we have it. now. Speaking of good things, I have a triple chocolate amaretto dessert here. And this is the dessert that's served with Oh Holy Night. And for uh, Grinch dressing and gravy, we have a beautiful chocolate pate with a strawberry swirl, some raspberry coulis, and a chocolate candy. OK, now, Toby Jeans is a young professional in St. John's. She's very, very busy, but she still takes time to cook, bake especially. She loves baking. She wanted to have her kitchen organized, and Chef Bob Arneal is going to show her how to do it. Toby, thanks for inviting us into your home. It's nice to have you. Uh, Toby Jeans, meet Bob Arneal. Hi. Bob is a friend of mine. He's with Chef To Go. He's uh, an extraordinary chef and knows everything about how to organize a kitchen space so that you uh, have a really effective working space for your cooking. And I know you love to bake. 
I love it. So, so Bob's going to give us some tips now about uh, how to organize your kitchen. Uh, I guess we could start with the uh, workspace, eh? Yeah, um, workspace is, is very important, of course, and with baking especially, you need a lot of counter space. Mm -hmm. um, you're kind of limited to the counter space that you have, so you really need to take advantage of, of, uh, of what you do have. I see this all the time, um, things out on the counter. Yes. If you can get that away um, from the counters, then you've, you've got more workspace and you're not always having to move it or work around it, work yourself into a corner, that kind of thing. So first of all, I'd, I would get rid of that if you go up here in, in your, your cupboard, I don't know where you would store your plates and, and, uh, and dishes, but this is an ideal place to put your baking goods that you're going to use all the time because you're going to be working here. I never would have thought to put any of that in the cupboard. That would be a great start. Um, I'm not sure about your microwave. I don't know if that, if that kind of gets in your way there or not. I always get nervous when I see microwaves up high like that because I just imagine you're taking out something really hot and yeah. You know. uh, yeah, hot butter <clears throat> for baking. Yeah. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> yeah. You might consider moving that too, because then you're going to have some more great space right here um, that you can use again for, you know, maybe things that you use all the time, your sugar um, or what have you. Uh, you also have some more counter space here, which is a great idea. These. Uh, Portable islands are, are really popular these days. You can get them all over the place. And they're not um, very expensive either. Either they're not very expensive. This one's kind of small. I'd, I'd uh, like to have a little bit of a bigger work area, but certainly you can work with this too. Um, again, it has some open concept space, which is great in this kind of a, a kitchen. If the more things that you can get out in the open, the more accessible they are, the more easy they are to get at. In here. Don't mind me going in your cupboards, do you? Uh, no, you found the junk drawer. <laughs> Everybody has a junk drawer, but I'd, I'd put this in your bedroom or something. Okay. In, in, your, in your kitchen, if, if you could put in this drawer here, just pick out the top 10 small uh, utensils that you're going to use all the time, or things that you're going to use all the time. I don't know whether it um, be a, a meat thermometer, a, a zester, um, some twine for tying things up. Potato peeler. Potato peeler. And then you've got it right there. It's accessible whenever, whenever you want it. And Bob, it really is convenient too that this is on wheels. It's on wheels, yeah. Most of them are. Literally drag it around anywhere. And if I was baking over here, I would put this right over there, and then you you can go from here to here, and you got two two kind of work areas. And your sink is is right there for for cleanup, so that's uh, that's great. You've kind of got a long counter. I mean, you kind of got to work along here to when you come down to your stove, the the pot rack area. If you could get that a little closer to your stove somehow, um, you know, I don't hang, if you could hang something from the ceiling or, so it's here, so you just have to grab it and, and go to your stove, you know, that, that might be one small thing you could do. Uh, these uh, herbs and spices over here, that's probably not the best place to put. No, no, definitely not. Right next to the heat and in the light, two things, definitely not. <laughs> Fresh herbs are the way to go these days. You can get them all at the supermarkets or you can grow them yourself. Um, your, your little herbs that you have in, in the window, if you could expand on that, that would be great. And with, uh, with the spices, uh, they don't last that long, so um, I'd, I'd consider just uh, trying to buy just enough to get you through a short period of time and then replenishing them. Okay, well, uh, some really good tips there. Uh, have, have, has Bob helped you at all? Uh, <laughs> Greatly, yeah. I mean, the use of the space is a little different than what I'm doing, and it makes perfect sense. So just, I don't know why I didn't do it earlier. But Great. I'm okay. Good. Well, thank you, Bob. You're quite welcome. Thank you, you very now, much. Now you can get baking. <laughs> oh, it's about time. <laughs> Oh boy, Steve, this was really good. You know, I'm having a really hard time deciding which show I want to I've go see. I've made my choice. I'm going to go and see Grinch. You're going to see The Grinch? Yes, well, absolutely. I was thinking I wanted to see Oh Holy Night, you know? I just, there was just something about that menu, you know? The well, let's go for brunch then. Okay, we'll go to Sunday, Sunday, Sunday with Kellyanne Evans and Janet Cole. That's, That's a what great we'll do. idea. Capital idea, old chap. Well, folks, thanks for joining us on this edition of... One Chef. One Critic. Oh, Mr. Watson. Why, could Mr. I, Wells? Could I borrow a, a cup of your Central Dairies cream, please? I'm very low on dairy products. <laughs> oh, you are? <laughs> I think we should sing a Christmas song. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Glad tidings we bring. 
I don't know the rest of the words. <laughs>